And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Matago, who distributes their games through Asmodee, makes some of the most stunning games you will ever have seen. They've made a trilogy of some sorts. Um, the first game in the trilogy was Giants, which was about moving the giant stone statues on Easter Island. Really cool game with great production values. They followed it up with a, a game that's another game, the Cyclades, or Cyclades, however you pronounce it, uh, which was a game about, basically it was like a mix between a light war game, very light war game, and an auction, really good auction game, along with a very clever way of victory. Uh, Cyclades was a very great game. Kemet, then, is an amazing game. One of my favorite games. A game in which you use technology or, and upgrade your civilization as you fought other civilizations for control of temples. Very much like this. Well, I was really excited to hear that they were... The thing about Cyclades was, Cyclades came with these monsters. And these were really cool little monsters. Um, the fact was the monsters would show up for a turn and do something and go away. Kemet had monsters show up and these monsters came and fought along with you and helped your armies out. And so now they, there's this expansion that lets me use the monsters from Cyclades in Kemet and lets me use the monsters from Kemet in Cyclades. That's like a, that's like the, you got your peanut butter and my chocolate type thing. I was so excited about this. Took me a while to get this one to a review though, because to do that, I had to try them both out in the different games, um, which they're very excellent games though. Kemet, easy, boom, 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 boom. The Cyclades I don't play nearly as much as Kemet, but I still think it's a good game. Let's see how they fit in here and how they improve, they do, the both games. The first thing you'll notice is here's the miniatures from Kemet, and here's the, the miniatures from Kyklads. And you can see that there's really a difference between them. These are just white, while these have a wash done on them, which really, really helps make them look better. So I'm going to have to do something. I'm, I probably need to get all of these painted. Now, the monsters, let's talk about how this affects Kemet first. In Kemet, we have the Kemet board here, in which these monsters will be running around on the board. And basically, the game comes with six more tiles one for each of the five monsters that come in Kyklades, and one for a monster that comes in the expansion, which I don't have. So I don't have the, uh, the Cerebrus dogs here. However, of all the models that you need, that's the one that you need the least. Basically, this is a really cool one. When you buy this tile here, essentially you can put it in a territory, and that territory is immune to attack for this turn, or have, have bad things happen to it. Once you're done with it for this turn, this tile goes back and somebody else can buy this tile. So it basically gives you one turn of peace. It can be a really powerful tile and knowing when to buy it will certainly change games. The other ones are all monsters. If you buy this giant here with the boulder, he can travel around with an army of seven rather than five. If you buy the Minotaur, he is immune to damage from every anything except the enemy cards. Uh, the, the little magic cards, special abilities, he, he basically protects his troops from damage. On the opposite side, you have the Medusa, this nasty creature, and even more nasty on the picture of her. She prevents the enemy from blocking any damage. So she's a guaranteed kill one of your enemy troops and probably more depending on what cards you play. Extremely nasty and certainly one I like to buy quickly. Then the guy here on a horse, he isn't that useful. He can move one and attack one. What's so great about that? I'll tell you what's great about that. He is allowed to be with another monster. So you can have two monsters. Oh, I, I, I can't believe I put those two together. I'm going to put him with the giant scorpion. Come on. Face that. Fear that. And then we have the Kraken. When you buy the Kraken, you simply place it in the river. Everyone knows that you own the Kraken. And in every territory next to the river, not cities, but every other territory, you are plus one in battles. Now in Cyclades, when you, you add some more cards to the deck for each of the new monsters, here's the Scorpion card, etc. And when these are bought, you will get that monster added to you, and that monster stays on the board. That monster is not considered to be a mythological creature, rather it's considered to be a troop, which means it can be killed by the Harpy card. Um, uh, but 
it can move around and fight, so you basically have an extra troop, but you can also pay a gold coin on your turn to do a special attack. You can move this from the same island to another island, as long as there's ships, you move across ships like normal, but it also gets a special ability when you do this attack. So the army with the Sphinx can teleport to another, another island that you control before it makes its move which is really useful. It gives you a wide range. Not as cool as the snake though. The snake can skip over one spot of water for free. Make that very powerful to attack. You know, if I'm here, I can go to here or here and attack for free. If I have a boat here, I can zoom pretty far. The snake is really cool. The scorpion. Where did my awesome scorpion go? The scorpion here, when he arrives on an enemy's island, he automatically kills a troop which is a great thing. The elephant, when you're using an elephant, you automatically roll a three in combat. The scarab beetle, we call him the dung beetle. If he's not killed at the end of the battle, he can change one building into another type of building. The phoenix, if your troops are destroyed, they come back on the island where the attack started from, so rising from the ashes. And then the giant mummy here. Anyone that you kill joins your side. Probably my favorite one from this set. But I like them all because they all add a lot of cool abilities and make combat that much more interesting. Now this is really interesting because you know that I like Kemet better than Cyclades. I think they're both great games, but Kemet is awesome. But I think this expansion helps Cyclades more than it helps Kemet. Now don't get me wrong. Um, they both are great additions. Let's talk about them separately. The monsters in Kemet, very nice. There are now five more monsters, well six if you have the, the dog. So six monsters, but the, the one, the dog doesn't really move around and attack. So you have five more monsters you can attack with, and there's already seven in the base game. That's 12 monsters that people can have. So even if you're playing the full complement of five players, everybody can have a couple of these giant monsters to move around. And that's exciting. And they also just offer that many more options. And it makes combat more fun. I always thought Kemet was, was you know, there's, there's combat and there's non-combat in the game, different strategies. And I always thought the combat one, to me, is the more fun. To have more options is great. Um, although, like I said, you'll probably have to paint these so they match. Then, the Cyclades, though, they really change the game. Because when these come out, you're going to want to buy them because they will make the attacks. There's not nearly as many attacks in Cyclades. The attacks in Cyclades need to be very thoughtful, planned out, because they can change the whole game. But these monsters can make that attack yours if you get one. So they're very, you know, you're very tempted to buy them. Now, here's the problem with this expansion. What if you don't like one of the games? Then it's worthless because you would have to go hunt down the pieces. Although you could go hunt down, I guess, mythological figures. I wish they made a pack of these figures available. Like here's packs of the Kemet figurines. Here's packs of the Cyclades figurines so you can buy them. Because if I was only going to keep one of these, I'd keep Kemet. But I would hate to cannibalize Cyclades to steal these monsters from the game. So for now, I'm going to hang on to both of them. But I'm trying to think of some kind of solution to this because I would love to just keep all the monsters in one of the games and use that one game. For me, it would be Kemet, but I can see how some people would like Cyclades better. Either way, if you own both games, this expansion is a must with a capital M-U-S-T buy. You must get it. It's amazing. If you own one of them and you're considering the other game, well, let me tell you, the other game is great and you will like mixing them together. I think it's a really cool idea. It's not as logistically sound as I'd like it to be, but still a lot of fun. So get it. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.